I've been out and about visiting schools in Greenwich, talking to teachers, young people uh, and children uh, about their experiences and seeing directly the challenges that they face uh, in the school environment today. We started off in Linton Mead in Thamesmead and what was amazing uh, about the work going on there was the kind of cross-curricular aspects of what they were doing, how they were celebrating learning together as a whole school uh, and I think the content uh, of the learning was, was really kind of mind-blowing. Uh, they talked a lot about the partnerships that they've developed with Construnk, uh, which is a great example of how we're linking Greenwich schools up with our partners to give our young people opportunities. Then we moved on to Plumstead Manor, where I did a question and answer session with my former uh, teacher, Douglas Gregg, who's now the head teacher, uh, and some young women from across the school. And what really struck me uh, from the conversations I had at Plumstead Manor was the real impact that the that cuts have had on young people's lives. I talked to a young woman who was complaining about access to mental health services and uh, talking about how difficult that was for her personally. It was also really powerful to talk to them uh, about how unsafe they felt uh, as a result of Brexit uh, and there was a real uncertainty and nervousness uh, on their part about how they fit into the world, uh, what kind of Britain uh, they want to build um, and where they saw themselves within that. Uh, and I think reassuring young people in this time of change that we value them and that they have uh, a huge part to play in shaping the future of this country uh, is really, really important. Hello, how are you doing? Then we went down to Carbwell Primary School, which was just mind-blowing. And actually the content uh, of the lessons that I saw in terms of literacy uh, was phenomenal. Uh, Carbwell's a school that's working really hard to raise aspirations uh, of our young people doing lots of work with families and uh, children in a school setting to up-level literacy uh, and not just dealing with you know, the basics of reading and writing uh, but what help they can give to other areas. So they've got a huge project going on looking at sugar uh, and how sugar can be reduced. So they're a sugar smart school uh, and that was really powerful to talk to the young people about the choices that they're making as a result of the learning that they're getting in school in Fosdean School uh, in Cholton, uh, which is a really special school. Uh, and it's a place where they have at the heart of the school offer um, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Uh, and they're a UNICEF school uh, who prioritise children's rights uh, in the school curriculum. Uh, I talked to children about what that meant for them uh, and they could articulate how their rights are respected throughout the school, uh, how teachers uh, enable them to lead uh, and how children and the kind of views of children are very much at the heart of the school uh, and how children themselves are shaping their own learning. Then we went down to James Wolfe Primary School uh, where I joined in a phonics lesson uh, with two deaf children uh, and saw just the most amazing um, ex quality, I think, educational experience. And what I loved about James Wolfe and something we try to do across all of our Greenwich schools is that we make sure that inclusion is one of our key values in, in, in any education environment. And actually we were providing for children with high needs uh, in a mainstream school setting uh, and providing the support that they needed. Uh, then uh, we stopped off at Haymo Primary School, which was my old primary school. Uh, it was great to see uh, a school that we've also been able to expand. Uh, so we're providing extra school places and capacity uh, where we can. Um, we started off with a math lesson and then moved into a literacy lesson uh, where we saw young people uh, engaged in extraordinary um, English lesson where they were up-leveling their writing using virtual reality technology to up-level their writing in English, uh, to develop their vocabulary uh, and immerse the children uh, in an experience, I think, that really contributed um, to the excitement and energy for them of the lesson. Uh, and then finally, we finished up uh, here at Talis, uh, which is my old secondary school. Uh, we watched a science lesson uh, where you can see the kind of quality first teaching uh, experiences that we're giving uh, to our young people in Greenwich. Um, but where again, budget pressures and the financial challenges uh, are on the, on the minds of everyone. So I need to be coming to schools like Talis, uh, working with teachers and heads uh, so we can get the message out there uh, about the significant challenges that our schools face. Uh, it's been great to talk to young people firsthand uh, about their lives uh, and give me a sense of what I need to do uh, to be able to help them in my role as leader of the council. Uh, we have a huge ability in Greenwich, uh, not just to raise aspiration, but I want to make Greenwich uh, a great place to grow up for everyone. Uh, and I want to hear from children and young people firsthand about what they want me to do about that. Without a doubt, the biggest issue facing schools across Greenwich is the reduction to their funding. 
uh, that's been imposed by the government. Uh, I've heard firsthand from teachers uh, who are unable to balance budgets. Uh, I've seen firsthand uh, the impact that those cuts have had uh, and I've had direct conversations with young people about what that means for them. Uh, I need to make sure that we're out there lobbying, uh, making the case for proper school funding, uh, to get an increase in school funding uh, and ensure that we can all work together to make sure that young people in Greenwich have the best start in life.